I don't think I've been this excited to open a package in maybe forever. When you see that smiling, happy, excited face, it's like watching a kid at Christmas. This box behind me is something I'm super psyched about, and I'm not sure why I filmed this as an unboxing reveal as if you don't know what's in this huge box. Clearly from the thumbnail you already know, it is the EUC, the biggest, baddest mama jama EUC on the market, the veteran Sherman. What makes the Sherman the biggest and baddest EUC on the market? It's its speed and its range. On the company's website, it says it has a range of 205 kilometers, but in real world testing that I've watched on YouTube, it's probably best case scenario about 160 kilometers, but that is still dwarfing every other personal electric vehicle on the market today. And then on the top speed side, I think the veteran might have actually undersold it. On their website, it says it has a top speed of 45 miles per hour, which is 72 kilometers an hour. But in real world testing, I've seen more than one rider get to 52 miles per hour, which is 83 kilometers an hour. Now, I do not suggest you ever ride that fast. Even those people who did it said they did it in a controlled, straight environment and they wouldn't suggest it. But nonetheless, it has that potential top speed. Electric vehicles like a Tesla have a lot of torque. You can get up to speed really quickly, but you don't want to drive above a certain speed because it's just not safe. Now, I think the personal electric vehicle is going to be the future. And it doesn't have to be an electric unicycle. Personal electric vehicles come in all shapes and sizes and it just depends on what you want to do and how far you want to go. There's things like an electric bike, an electric scooter, an electric skateboard, and a one wheel. And then of course, what I ended up choosing, which is an electric unicycle. No matter which type you end up choosing, a personal electric vehicle is perfect for when a car just really isn't an option. Picture a sailor like myself and Janice. When we go to shore in our dinghy, we like to go and explore land. Now, of course, if we're gonna walk, we can maybe cover five, six, seven blocks. If we go on our folding bike, we can go a little further, but let's face it, in the heat of summer, biking around to see things while you're sweating profusely and still trying to be on camera and looking relatively pretty is kind of hard to do. Now, if we have a personal electric vehicle, we can go far and wide without dying of heat stroke. Now, my decision to get the Sherman was not an easy one. I did tons of research, hundreds of hours of video watching of different comparisons of different types of personal electric vehicles. At one time or another, I was considering a one wheel, then I was considering an electric scooter, and it finally came down to a unicycle by this photo in a unicycle forum. Sold me right away. No, I'm kidding. Do not ever ride with this little clothing on. You're going to lose skin, guaranteed. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what criteria I needed for my personal needs, and maybe yours are the same. If so, you might come up with the same conclusion I did, that a unicycle has the best bang for the buck in the terms of speed and range. But it was a hard choice. I mean, the one wheel, I got rid of that idea fairly quickly due to range. The scooter was a harder choice. There are some really good scooters out there and some really good resources online and on YouTube to check out all of that. And then I'm gonna say, once I've decided on the unicycle, what YouTube channels I used to narrow down my choice to the Sherman. There are so many good options and I'm gonna name three or four YouTube channels that you should definitely check out. I mean, you shouldn't take my word for it that the Sherman is the best unicycle or even the best personal electric vehicle. I mean, what do I know? This is my very first one. But these guys do nothing but test different electric vehicles and unicycles and compare one against the other. So they're a wealth of knowledge. I'll put all of their YouTube channels in the description below as well. Okay, so let's get on with the video where I go through the different types of personal electric vehicles and the pros and cons that I saw and see if you come to the same conclusion that I did. We anchor and hoist the sail. Wait, wait, wait. This is not gonna be a sailing episode, but I'm still going cruising. I think this is gonna change things. It's gonna change how Janice and I travel when we get off our boat. Maybe when we do road trips, which we're a big fan of doing, this is something we throw in our trunk and we go explore without having to bring our car everywhere. And if you're an RVer, same thing for you. Most RVers tow a car or a motorcycle or some way to get around when they finally get their motor home to the uh, parking spot in the park. This personal electric vehicle that I'm about to show you. Yeah, 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 Craig. They already know it's a Sherman from the thumbnail so you can stop with the big reveal. Let's just go over quickly the specs. The Sherman has the biggest battery cell on the market at 3,200 watt hours. Has one of the biggest engines at 2,500 watts. It has the longest range at 205 kilometers. It is the only EUC on the market right now with a digital readout on top that tells you your voltage and your speed and your distance traveled and all those things that you would like to know at a glance. It comes with a five amp, 100 watt charger, but there's two charging ports. So you can buy a second charger and charge it twice as fast. 
It comes with a big fat 20 inch tire and you can get that in knobby or in a street tire. I actually have both because when I ordered it, it came with a street tire. So I paid extra to have the knobby tire put on by Vancouver EUC, which is who I bought it from. It was important for me to get the knobby tire put on because my use case and the reason I bought the Sherman was I wanted a strong motor to take me off-roading. Knobby tire does that. Plus, I live in Ottawa, Canada which happens to hold the record as the coldest major capital in the world. So if you want an EUC in Ottawa, you gotta get used to riding in the snow because we get snow for about four to five months a year. The Sherman is built like a tank and you can see these roll bars are on either side, which is great for protecting it in case you have a spill. Those roll bars are also very important because you're gonna need both hands to lift this thing because it weighs 77 pounds. Now I can't say how the Sherman rides compared to any other personal electric vehicle because this is my very first. So I'm gonna leave that to all the YouTube channels that do personal electric vehicle reviews. Now they would know better than me, but once I figured out what my use case was, I wanted long range, I wanted the ability to go off road. I was able to narrow down all the myriad of options down to the Sherman. So I'm gonna walk you through my thought process where I thought each one would be good because your use case might be different than mine and see if you come up with the same conclusions. This is gonna be interesting. I think I'm gonna to have to just cut the box open. Hopefully I don't have to return it. Woo, that was a workout. And I'm not even in the inner box yet. Okay, welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. It is Christmas time for me today. This is a Christmas present to me from me, because who else is gonna spend something like the amount of money this costs? And I'm so excited, I can't take the grin off my face. I know it's not a secret because the thumbnail gave it away. I just got the Veteran Sherman, which is an EUC or an electric unicycle. And I wanna talk about why I think this is game changing for those, as you can tell from my um, logo. We're mostly a travel and sailing channel. And if you watch the series we did this summer where Janice and I got our folding bikes and went exploring every time we went to a new city, the one thing I learned from that is, well, Janice doesn't really like to get super sweaty, especially if she has to be on camera. And I love to explore and I like to go off road and I, like, I love dirt biking and stuff like that. So I decided that at least for now, I wanted to get myself something that I could learn on and then hopefully get Janice engaged in it enough that she wants something like this or maybe something a little easier to ride so that we can go exploring on land when we get to shore or you know in a dinghy or to a marina in a boat. We could just take something like this to sh off the boat and go exploring and go exploring for a long way because unlike our folding bikes where we had to pedal in 35 degree heat and sweating and then trying to go on camera, um, this will allow us to explore far and wide. Now this isn't just a, something that a sailor could enjoy. Anybody who has to commute into a big city where parking is almost impossible to find or crazy expensive, this would be something you could throw in the trunk of your car, go to a park and ride on the outskirts of town, and ride those last whatever number of miles to your work or even roll it right onto a subway or a bus or whatever. This is, uh, this is kind of like its leash. If this was a dog, this is a leash. You don't have to fight it either. This dog will go wherever you wanna go and I'll explain that in a second. So what I wanna do is talk a little bit about the Sherman, but there are plenty of channels that have gone into infinite detail about this. And I wanna just shout out a few of them, Wrong Way, uh, Marty Backey, I think it's uh, electric unicycles, but I know the guy who runs it is Marty Backey. He does a lot of distance tests, and that's something that the veteran Sherman does like no other EUC. And uh, Koji Rolls, he kind of takes things to a more extreme limit, and he rides them hard and sees how they performed. He does jumps with them. He has this as well. He actually wiped out pretty hard on this on a street, and he admits he took it a little too aggressively on a street, hit a pothole, then a manhole cover and just bit the, bit the dust with this. But luckily, that learned we learned something from that as well. Is that this is called the veteran Sherman for a reason. And the Sherman is from, this thing is built like a tank. Now, if you don't know anything about electric unicycles, I'll just explain the bare, bare minimum here. Most electric unicycles are same exact physics as this. It's a lithium ion battery pack strapped to a gyroscopic single wheel that when you lean forward, the motor compensates by going forward. When you lean back, it goes back and that's what keeps you up and down. So it, it tries to the best of its ability to keep you upright, which is good. The downside is you only have the one wheel. So if you hit loose sand while you're on a high speed turn or a wet manhole cover, or you hit a pothole followed by a manhole cover, 
chances are you're going down. And if you go down with a normal EUC, they're mostly just plastic housing around all that batteries and wheels. And when that EUC starts tumbling, the plastic tends to, well, sometimes it just plain disintegrates and then you're stuck with an EUC that you need to spend lots of time trying to find parts to rebuild it. This thing, as you can see, bars all the way around it, like crash bars, built like a tank weighs 77 pounds, which is the heaviest EUC on the market right now, I believe. But the reason it's so heavy is because it has the largest battery bank on the market right now. It's got a 3,200 watt hour battery bank. That's right, 3,200 watt hours. And I'm gonna talk about why I chose an EUC over a one wheel or a boosted board, a powered skateboard, or an electric scooter. And believe me, at one point or another, except for the skateboard. I never really considered that. At one point or another, I considered all of those. In fact, I almost bought a one wheel until I really started researching what I wanted to do with it and what I would get the most out of. And that's why I went with an EUC. So Sherman has the biggest battery, therefore the longest range. This is going to blow your mind. This EUC on paper can go about 200 kilometers on a single charge. My Harley Davidson V-Rod out in the garage, which I almost never ride anymore, unfortunately, because I'm always sailing. It gets about 140 kilometers to a full tank of gas. That's right, 140 kilometers to a tank of gas. Uh, V-Rods are not designed for long distance rides, unfortunately. So this can go further. Now that's on paper and that's like probably wind assisted on a completely flat surface with a 120 pound rider. But in real world testing by people like Marty Backey, riding up and down mountains through streets at stop sign stopping and yada yada 150 i've seen other people get 160 kilometers in real world riding and not riding super slow to get the maximum uh distance that the factory probably wants to do but uh yeah 160 kilometers to a tank no time am i ever going to want to ride 160 kilometers non-stop just isn't going to happen it's, but one thing I didn't want to have is range anxiety. So let's go through all of the different types of EUCs slash PEVs, personal electric vehicles, and I'll explain to you in detail each one what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it and why I ended up passing on those other options to go for this. Okay, so let's go through all the different types of PEVs or personal electric vehicles and explain what types there are, what options you have, and whether you agree with me that an electric unicycle is actually the best option, definitely the best bang for the buck when it comes to speed, range, and just general enjoyability, although that one's questionable. So let's go through, a PEV is really a personal electronic vehicle, electric vehicle is really just a vehicle designed to carry only one person. Oh, obviously, a norm, if you say I drive an electric vehicle, people are gonna assume you drive a Chevy Volt or a Tesla or something that's a car. So you have to kind of say, I drive a PEV to let people know it's a personal electric vehicle. So let's go through the different types. Obviously there's just normal mountain bikes or bikes that have an electric motor snapped onto it, but I don't really, I won't count that as a separate unit, a separate class. I'm gonna start with the first class and we're gonna go from the most easy to ride, the easiest to just pick it up and go, to the most advanced and the steepest learning curve. And unfortunately, <laughs> This is the steepest leveraging curve vehicle I'm gonna get, you're gonna get, and I'm actually a brand new rider. So I got my work cut out for me to learn how to ride this without hurting myself or hurting this thing. And I am going to wear so much gear to protect myself. I obviously can't wear padding all over, all over this, although when you open up your Sherman, you do get power pads that kind of stick onto the side. And those might actually help a little bit if you do drop this slowly, hopefully, on an asphalt. This might actually uh, scrape up your pad instead of scraping up the beautiful plastic housing. I definitely have to take some close-up pictures of this because this is never gonna look this clean ever again or, or scratch-free. So, starting with the one that's easiest to just pick up and go, and it's the ones you see on every street corner being rented to just about anybody who wants to put a credit card out there, and that's an electric scooter. So an electric scooter has the exact same physics as riding a bike. So if you know how to ride a bike, you probably know how to ride an electric scooter, except for you have to learn how to push the accelerator to get going and how to brake. And that's where a lot of people get into collisions because they don't know what they're doing and they get on an electric vehicle or electric scooter and they pin it. They wanna go as fast as they can 
and then they, all of a sudden something jumps out in front of them and they're not sure how to stop and then they end up running into a car or running into a somebody walking their dog or whatever and that's what gives electric scooter sometimes a bad name not because of the technology of electric scooter if you drive it like you are not insane you probably will be fine and you will never crash because almost everybody knows how to ride a bike and it's the exact same physics you have two tires you know you lean right or you turn right you lean left you turn left and pretty simple right as long as you aren't going too too fast that was the first thing that i thought of because after this summer of biking around i thought man we should really get an electric vehicle uh, maybe an electric bike or even better an electric scooter why is an electric scooter better than an electric bike an electric bike is heavy and when you've got limited space on a sailboat taking a full size or even slightly smaller than full size bike and strapping a big battery pack on it and strapping a big electric motor on it to get the speed and range that you want it becomes a very big very cumbersome thing to load on and off your boat from a dinghy picture a floating dinghy behind your boat and you're trying to hand hand up to your wife a full-size mountain bike with battery packs and motors on it it's probably going to be like 100 pounds it's just going to be really unwieldy so i really never considered an electric bike as an option but electric scooters are and i'll throw pictures of what they look like if you're not aware it's really just a flat platform that you stand on and a and a small set of handlebars and all of these vehicles now that are designed for the personal market have all got compact ability in mind so the handlebars fold down onto the platform that you would stand on and everything collapses down to a very small and manageable size and usually they're not that heavy so you can just pick them up throw them in the trunk of your car or roll them you know or bring them on the bus with you or bring them in the subway with you so you can do that last mile of commuting with a scooter and they're very good bang for the buck that's one of the reasons i almost went for it was because there are so many people competing in the electric scooter market and a lot of the companies if not all of them now are chinese so they're all cutting prices and giving you more features for more for less and less money so you get an amazing uh bang for the buck in terms of speed range and general comfort in terms of it's pretty hard to crash them unless you're driving like an idiot so why didn't i go for the electric scooter well, if you watch this summer series, when we were biking around and I'm trying to film as a YouTuber, hey, we're in this town and look at the beautiful vistas and the views and look at this restaurant that looks like a good place to stop. It's hard to ride a bike looking around and filming and have it not be all shaky because what happens is you look away and you're trying to film, but then you realize with one hand you're all over the road and you're worried about hitting pedestrians or running into parked cars and stuff. So what ends up happening is the footage is kind of crappy. So after the electric scooter, the next most easy thing to ride, maybe because we have some experience as kids riding skateboards, is the electric skateboard. It's got four wheels, so it's more stable. You can actually stop at a red light and stand on the skateboard and you're not going to fall off. You can't say that about an electric unicycle. You almost, it's almost impossible to stand stationary and not eventually have to take your foot off to support yourself. And to a lesser extent, one wheel. So you can, you can stand on a one wheel, but there's a little bit of constant balancing to make it not go forward or backwards. I mean, I've seen people do it, but it's still not as easy as a skateboard. With four wheels, you can literally just, and with electric skateboards, in case you're not aware, it's usually you're accelerating not by leaning forward or leaning backwards, you're accelerating by using a trigger. So you have a little, a little hand controller that you pull the trigger to go faster and you let the trigger go to go slower, and then you hit another button to brake. So it's, it's almost like, a car you know hit the gas to go faster hit the brake to go slower um, pretty simple now the downside to an electric skateboard and why I never even really considered it seriously is because most skateboards as you can remember from your younger days have little wheels now there are ones that are off-road skateboards now that have a bigger kind of like bike tire on each corner but those are very rare um, most skateboards like the boosted board that most people know from the Casey Neistat channel have smaller wheels which means if you're not paying attention you're filming and you hit a pothole you're going flying if you hit if you try and go anywhere near let's say a bike path where there's a branch has fallen on the bike path and you're not paying attention you're going flying and if you watch Casey Neistat's channel back then who knows how many dozens of camera bodies he smashed beyond recognition because he dropped it when he was trying to save himself from falling off of his boosted board so it's it's one of those things where it's really easy to ride until you're not paying attention and you hit a pothole or something else and then you're going flying because it just stops and you keep going at whatever speed you're at so as much as the skateboard is easier to stay on 
you have to still be watching the cracks in the pavement and the, and the, and the potholes. And you're definitely not going to be going up curbs with it because the wheels are too small. So, uh, yeah, never really even considered it because I want to go off road onto paths, onto, you know, uh, you know, non asphalt surfaces. And you're really not going to do that with a normal like boosted board type skateboard. So that was the next option. Not really even a serious contender, but the next one, that is more difficult than a skateboard because it only has one wheel, but is definitely easier than an electric unicycle, is a one wheel. So a one wheel, and I'll throw a picture of it on it, it is in essence the same idea. It's a skateboard, but something almost like you're surfing. You lean forward to go faster and you lean back to slow down or lean, keep leaning back to go backwards. Um, from everybody's account, it's a hell of a lot of fun to ride. I really seriously thought about getting this because every YouTuber seems to get one so that they can film cinematic shots uh, while they're moving. And it's a great tool for that. The only reason I eventually, I mean, I was serious. I almost bought one. I was even networking with Facebook groups here in Ottawa for the one wheel riders groups because there's a lot of them because I thought that's what I was going to get. My concern and a concern of many one wheel owners is the lack of range. So picture this, a one wheel is in essence like a skateboard board. It's about, you know, two inches thick with a big um, go-kart tire in the middle. It's a big fat go-kart tire. Well, the big fat tire, it's 10 inches wide, is big enough to go over bumps and rocks and uh, small rocks, not big rocks. It's not going to be able to jump a curb unless you're really, really talented at making it bounce before you get to the curb. But it can go over small obstructions. You can probably go through some pretty bumpy asphalt, no problem at all. Um, but the downside to uh, it is that that little skateboard with the two inch thickness is the only space they have for batteries. The motor is inside that 10 inch wheel, but the batteries are only in that small space of the skateboard. Therefore, the battery capacity of a one wheel is very small. I've got some stats to talk about it when I get to the Sherman, but it's crazy small. And because of that, it's crazy short distances. In fact, they have two models right now, both, well, both models have been out for a while. And that's another thing that kind of bugs me is that the price is so high and yet they haven't really come out with anything new lately. So you're paying the same price for, let's say the one wheel XR, which is their extended range or their more expensive one. You're paying the same price now, which works out in Canadian dollars to be $2,800, not counting tax. And that doesn't even give you all the kit you need because it doesn't come with that plastic fender to stop the wheel from spraying you with muck and all that stuff. Believe it or not, when you pay that kind of money, you should get that plastic fender included, but you don't. And you don't get any additional accessories that a lot of people add on later. Like there's little wheels for the front of the board so that if you do put your board down into the ground, the wheels will kind of roll for a bit so you don't go flying off your board. Because they have the patent on the technology of this one fat wheel, they're the only ones producing this. Therefore, they can charge whatever they want because it does have a following. It does have a lot of people saying it's a great time and blah, blah, blah. And they convince their friends to buy them. And there are all these one wheels riding clubs. Um, so they can charge whatever they want. So $2,800 with tax $3,200, $3,300 for something that has, and let me just come up with the statistics here. The one wheel XR extended range has a range, and this is the company saying this, of 12 to 18 miles. Real world, a guy my size, I'm six feet tall, pushing about 210. I'm gonna be thinking I'm on the lower end of the 12 to 18. I'm probably getting 12 miles on a good day on an extended range, one wheel. So keep that number in mind, 12 miles on the extended range. They have a smaller, cheaper version called the Pint that has a documented range of six to eight miles. And when I tell you how small the battery is not, let's say I'm probably gonna get more like five miles, which means if I'm leaving the boat, I can't just go around willy nilly wherever I want. You have about two and a half miles that you can go before you have to turn around and come back. If there was a technology with these boards, if they kind of, kind of progressed a bit and had hot swappable batteries where you had a battery that came with it that get you, let's say for the XR, 12 miles, but you had another backpack a battery in your backpack where you just slap it in and get another 12 miles, then all of a sudden it becomes a reasonable option if you want to go exploring a city. But that's not an option. So your only option is to ride it until it's almost dead, 
And then if you're not near your home or back, you're, you're not ready to go back yet, you've got to find a Starbucks or Tim Hortons or something and sit there and charge your board for a long time to get it fully charged from zero to full. Like an hour and a half, two hours, I'm not sure, but it's a long, it's not 10 minutes. It's not like an iPhone where you plug in for 10 minutes and all of a sudden you've got two hours of battery time. No. So the big complaint even by one wheel owners is the range anxiety, they call it. You're having fun, you're out with your friends, you're one wheeling and inevitably somebody in the group goes, I gotta head back, my battery's almost dead, especially if you're riding with people that have a pint, which has the smaller battery size. Okay, I just found it and the pint has a battery with 148 watt hours, 148, keep that in mind. The XR, their extended range, has a battery capacity of 324 watt hours. So that's their big battery. That's the biggest they have. 324 for the long range one wheel. This unicycle, the Sherman, has a 3200 watt hour battery. Like I said before, the one wheel, the extended range one, 12 to 18 miles, let's say 12. The Sherman has a range of 205 kilometers on paper. Realistically, 150, 160 and they almost cost the same. This is just a little bit more money, but it pretty much comes with everything you need with the one gripe I have that I had to buy the mudguard. I'll show you the back, I'll take some shots of it. Surprisingly, and this might've been an oops when they designed it, they didn't realize that because the tire sticks out the back further than the rest of the body, that if you're going through mud and slop and stuff, this, you're gonna get spray up your back. And uh, so you can easily buy, when you buy your uh, Sherman, you can buy the Mudguard for $70 US, I think, or, or I think I paid 84 Canadian. So I tried to think, do I really need it? Could I just jury rig something on the back? Like a lot of people have done, they just screw on some plastic piece that they just made themselves. It never looks professional. And these things actually, I gotta give it to Sherman, our veteran. The aftermarket seat that they give you and the aftermarket mudguard are actually pretty heavy duty stuff, much like the Sherman itself. So be prepared. That's something you're gonna definitely have to buy. So when I factored in the amount of money I'd have to buy for the One Wheel XR, and if I paid just a tiny bit more, I could get the biggest, baddest uh, electric unicycle on the market. Now, this thing weighs 77 pounds. So did I make a huge mistake as my first one wheel or my first unicycle to get the biggest, baddest, fastest, longest range, heaviest unicycle? Some people out there that have the channels that I was watching were saying, don't start with this one. It's too big, it's too powerful. I've never been a believer of that. I've been a believer of if you've researched it and you know what you need, you know you're a bigger guy, you know you want the torque to go up hills into mountains, you want to have that peace of mind of the no range anxiety, then you probably want the veteran Sherman. Yeah, it might take a little longer to learn how to ride it because it's heavier and torquier and whatnot. I could have bought an entry level uh, unicycle for 800 bucks Canadian, you know, like way less, probably one quarter of what I paid. And I would probably be happy with it for about a month. And then I know how I am. I would meet with other people and I'd be on my little kind of toy unicycle and I would have the, oh, I should have spent the extra money. So I've done that with everything. I always research, research, research the crap out of it. Find out what the best is. Find out how much more it is than the middle of the road version. And if it's not a lot more, I always go for the best. So there you go. So I think we've talked about why I picked Scooter is actually a good option for someone who doesn't want to go long, long distances or super fast. Um, Janice, she has nothing right now. I wanna learn on this. I'm gonna let her probably try it. If she wants a unicycle, we'll go that way. But I could also see her wanting a scooter, electric scooter, because they're so simple. You hold on to the handlebars, you push the accelerator and you go. So she might be good with that and I'd be good with that too. She doesn't film like I film. So she doesn't think about, oh, how am I gonna film with my hands when I'm supposed to be holding the handlebars? So a scooter, much less expensive than this. Similar long distance range, maybe not as far as this, but I don't think I'll ever, ever, ever need to ride the whole 160 kilometers in a day anyway. Um, so more inexpensive, similar long distance range and similar speed. And we never really talked about speed yet. 
Believe me, mom, if you're watching, I have no intention of testing this. There's lots of YouTubers that have, but the Sherman, being the biggest, baddest, also has one of the torquiest, fastest motors. It's a 2,500 watt motor. Um, just going back to compare to the one wheel. The one wheel, the XR, actually they both have the exact same motor. The Pint and the XR have a 500 watt motor. This is 2,500 watts. So, and I'm gonna weigh the same whether I'm on a one wheel or I'm on a unicycle. So it's gonna push my same 210 pound frame around whether I'm on a one wheel or, but this engine is, or this motor is five times as powerful. So getting back to speed, this thing has been on YouTube, GPS tracked by real people that don't work for the company, going 52 miles per hour. I will never, ever, ever try it. But what everybody says, somebody I really respect, Marty Backe, he, he does those long distance ones. He says it's so comfortable cruising at 35 miles an hour. 35 miles an hour is the comfortable, kind of relaxed cruising speed of this because it's so stable, so heavy and stable that you'll ride at 35 and think you're going slow. Meanwhile, other people on smaller unicycles riding beside you are feeling like they're pushing it to keep up with you. So there you go. You're paying for that extra power and torque and it's almost like driving an SUV versus a little putt-putt. The SUV just cruises down the highway without any care in the world and you feel very secure. So there's a bit of value there by paying the extra money. So there you go. You can tell that for my use case, I narrowed it down to the Sherman, but if your use case is completely different, then you might come up with a better option. If you don't plan to go far and you plan to drive on pretty smooth asphalt, then any of the electric vehicles will work. And you can probably go on a fairly small budget and still get something that will suit your needs perfectly. After you figure out your use case, if you also decide that a unicycle is probably the best bang for the buck, then maybe you want to follow some of these channels that I spend a lot of time watching. Of course, there's Wrong Way, and his claim to fame is that he likes to kind of torture test these things. He likes to go up 25 degree inclines, 35, and then even 45 degree inclines, often to the detriment of the unicycle, which almost none of them can make a 45 degree incline. I kind of cringe every time one comes crashing down, but hey, he's trying to show how torquey the engines are, I guess. He also showcases that with a large wheel of an EUC, you can go up and down stairs, you can go over curbs, you can do a lot of things that you can't do with any other kind of electric vehicle. The next channel I'll mention is Hsiang, or Hsiang, I don't know if the H is silent. I like him because he often will tell you what he doesn't like about a unicycle. They're always afraid that a lot of these guys are getting free unicycles to test and they're just gonna say every unicycle's great. Not this guy, he doesn't like it. He gives you all the reasons he doesn't like it and that is refreshing. I think the biggest unicycle reviewer channel is Coogee Rolls, and he is skilled, really, really skilled. He'll take this thing anywhere, through anything, do jumps with it. He's just fun to watch. He's also the one reviewer that while reviewing the Sherman, actually put it to the test of being called a Sherman and wiped out hard with this thing. Tumbled it badly and the Sherman was fine. No, really, just a few scratches. So that proved to me that this thing can take a beating. And the final channel is made by a man cut from the same cloth as I am, Marty Backe. He's probably around my age too, and he just likes to go out on these really long rides through the beautiful countryside of Southern California. And he also is very passionate about getting more people involved in the electric unicycle sport, I guess, by organizing these group rides. He does the Southern California group rides. And a lot of the footage I've got is from that group ride. I got permission from another YouTuber who was always in all these rides called Mal Scott. And he and his little son, Brandon, are in so much footage. And I thought it was so cute. I, I contacted him because I didn't really feel comfortable putting his little son on my channel. And he said, no, no, use the footage for sure. But the footage is all of the group rides that Marty Backe from Electric Unicycles organizes. And that's awesome. If I didn't live all the way across the continent and in another country, I would so join one of these group rides because they look like one hell of a lot of fun. And that's the thing I'm looking forward to with the electric unicycle is the range and the ability to go long distances off roads. And I'm looking forward to hopefully riding with other people. And back to this footage of little Brandon. I talked to Scott about it and he's been riding since he's almost been in kindergarten. So if you think that this sport is only for full grown adults, you're wrong. He says right now, Brandon weighs 65 pounds and that EUC he's riding weighs 60 pounds. So it almost weighs as much as him. And he's still 
very skilled at this. I mean, there's so much footage on Mal Scott's channel. You should go check it out if you want to see what little kids can do on, in essence, a full-size EUC. It's uh, pretty mind-blowing. Now I just have to get out there and ride myself, try to get my skills up to Brandon's level because I got to start riding in the snow. The snow is already flying here in Ottawa, Canada. So yeah, got some work ahead of me. All I know is that while I'm learning in these slippery conditions, I'm probably going to fall down a lot. So I'm going to wear almost as much. No, actually, I'm going to wear more gear than the Black Cobra does. He looks cool though, doesn't he? But I'm gonna wear that, plus I'm gonna wear a motorcycle coat on top because it's damn cold outside. So I'm gonna be so puffy, I'm gonna look like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, but that way when I fall down, it won't hurt. Every channel I've even lightly referred to during this video, I put the full channel link in the description. So go there, check them out, subscribe to their channel, show them some love. We're trying to get this EUC thing to grow. I bet you when I drive around here in Ottawa, nobody's gonna even know what the heck I'm riding on because I don't know anybody who owns one. So if you live in Ottawa and you do own one, Hit me up. There's my email address. Let's go riding. So until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.